All right, ladies and gentlemen, we are doing acid-base equilibrium. Um, if you look at the Canvas course, we're right here on the Chapter 16 Acid-Base Equilibrium-1 PowerPoint. Um, so pull that up, and then this will run. This will run through that with you. Um, these are all the sections in your text, um, in the brown text on Chapter 16 Acid-Base Equilibria. And uh, the PowerPoint goes through all of them. Um, some of them are more important than others, and that's the whole purpose of my lecture through it. Hopefully also to make some sense of it for you. Um, Arrhenius is the definition of acids, and one of the two definitions of acids and bases that you need to know. Um, Arrhenius's definition is based on empirical evidence or uh, data that you can get in the lab. And so it says that if it's an acid, then it must lower the pH, and if it's a base, then it must raise the pH, because acids contribute hydrogen ions to water, and bases contribute hydroxide ions to water. Now, it's important to note um, here, maybe and somewhere else in the future, I uh, will also make a note of this, that, um, can I draw? Yes, I can draw that. That, um, H plus ions um, are defined as hydrogen ions, but they're also um, they're also protons, and that's really important um, because uh, chemists will refer to um, acids as releasing a proton instead of releasing a hydrogen ion. Um, this is what um, chemists do because uh, hydrogen ion itself is just a bare proton, right? So if you looked at what is a hydrogen atom, well, it's a proton in the nucleus surrounded by that uh, negative electron, right? And then if you take away that negative electron, then it's just a proton. Um, so that's, that's how that works. But <clears throat> in actuality, it, it doesn't really happen like that because when you have things in water, there's water around, and when you have water uh, available, it is going to accept that naked proton and change it into an H3O plus ion. This H3O plus ion right here, this is called hydronium. The hydronium ion is um, what an acid actually forms Okay, when it, when it dissolves in water, is a hydronium ion. But for convenience, we use the term proton or hydrogen ion. Okay. So can I? There we go. Good, good. So, the other acid base theory is Bronsted Lowry acid base theory. Um, according to Bronsted Lowry acid base theory, you have an acid that donates a hydrogen ion or donates a proton, and then you have a base that accepts that proton. So, here's your classic example of a Bronsted Lowry acid base partnership. So, you have the Bronsted base in this case, which is ammonia NH3. Right, and then you have the Bronsted acid, which is HCl. Um, HCl has a hydrogen ion to donate, and ammonia has a lone pair of electrons that can accept a hydrogen ion. And so then you have the conjugate acid from the base. So you always have acid and bases always come in pairs. And so when you have your Bronsted base, it is paired with its conjugate acid. Right, and that is what it became when it be, when it did its job as a base. So, Bronsted base ammonia, the conjugate acid to ammonia is ammonium, which is has the extra hydrogen ion. Then you have your Bronsted acid of HCl, right, and then its conjugate base is chloride. So it has a hydrogen ion to donate as an acid. And then as a base, it's donated that hydrogen ion and becomes a conjugate base. So now it has the ability to accept a hydrogen and go back to be the acid. 
See, so that's basically the idea behind conjugates, conjugate acid-base pairs, is that um, the when it's doing its thing, right? When it's after it's done its thing, then it becomes the conjugate of what it was before. So a base, when it does its base thing and accepts an, a hydrogen ion, it becomes a conjugate acid. So it can it can now then donate a hydrogen ion and go back to be a base, right? So the cycle is uh, circular, it keeps going back and forth. So <clears throat> there's uh, three types of acids, if you will, with air quotes on it. Um, anything that has hydrogen, of course, you can conjugate, you can classify it as an acid. So you have strong acids. The strong acids are the ones that completely dissociate um, in water and they split up and you have hydrogen ions and then the conjugate base of that um, acid. And <clears throat> the thing that makes a strong acid strong is that it does this completely. It dissociates completely. Um, so there's seven strong acids. We talked about those in class the other day. I showed them to you on the board. But if you don't remember them, they're coming up later. <clears throat> then we have weak acids. Weak acids are acids that are not strong acids. So all acids that are not strong acids are weak acids. And meaning that they slightly dissociate in water, meaning their hydrogen ions kind of come off sometimes. They much more prefer to be the molecular form, and they, but they will donate their hydrogen ion um, when they need to act like an acid. Then the third type is substances that are not acidic. They have negligible acidity. Those um, substances contain hydrogen, but the hydrogen doesn't dissociate. So anything organic like methane, right, CH4, that is doesn't have acidity to it. That those hydrogen ions do not dissociate. Those bonds are super strong, and it does not leave, right? Then we have the auto ionization of water. So hot water has hydrogen on it and it has a hydroxide on it and so water itself could be an acid or it could be a base right because um we know that water is able to accept a hydrogen ion and become hydronium right so what the heck it's got lone pairs of electrons those can accept hydrogens right it also has hydrogens that it can donate so does that happen the answer is yes yes it does of course, because it can, it's going to. That's what chemistry is all about. So this has the ability to donate one of its hydrogens to the to another water molecule, and you get a hydronium ion and a hydroxide ion. And so you have water itself being both the acid and the base, right? Here's the acidic one, and here's the basic one. I'm joking. You can't tell which one's which. But anyway, this happens... 10 to the minus 14 times. So one every 10 to the minus 14 water molecules, this happens. And you may say to yourself, my gosh, Mr. Wolf, that is very rare. That is not a very big number. And you would be right. However, since a uh, mole of water molecules is 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd, this is going to happen often, right? Because there's lots and lots and lots of water molecules in a sample of water. And so this happens enough that it is important, vitally important. And so the Kc for this reaction, the equilibrium constant for this reaction, the products over the reactants, well, we don't include liquids in our equilibrium expressions, right, because they're pure. And so the Kc for this um, equilibrium expression would be the concentration of hydronium ion times the concentration of hydroxide ion divided by nothing because, or divided by one, because it's, these two are both liquids and not aqueous. <clears throat> and so when you do the math on this, since they both have to be equal to each other, and it's 10 to the minus 14 is the uh, how often it happens, then the concentration of hydronium ion and hydroxide ion for pure water is going to be the same, and it's going to be 10 to the minus 7th molar, right? And so because it's 10 to the minus 7th molar, right, that is why neutral pH 
is seven. Pretty exciting, huh? And so if you have your scale of pH, you have seven in the middle, that's neutral, when the concentration of hydrogen ion and the concentration of hydroxide ion is equal to seven, right? Um, and then the scale goes in directions depending upon the amount of hydrogen ion and hydroxide ion. Now notice that they always it always has to add up to 14 because, well, the the auto ionization of water, the value for that is is 10 to the minus 14th. So it has to add up to that. Okay. Um, that's why your pH scale goes from uh, 0 to 14. Okay. Um, now it is true that you can have uh, pH values less than zero and you can have uh, basic solutions that have a pH of greater than 14. Um, we're not going to come in contact with that. As, we're going to avoid that as often as possible. So here's your really useful equations. pH means that it's a negative log of the hydrogen ion concentration. So P means negative log. So every time you see a P in front of something, it means that you're taking the negative log of that thing. So pH is negative log of hydrogen ion concentration. pOH is the negative log of the hydroxide concentration. And since pH plus pOH equals 14, then you know the relationship between the two all the time. So make sure you get the tattoo. It's really important. Okay, so here's your seven strong acids, hydrochloric, hydrobromic, hydroiodic, nitric, chloric, perchloric, and sulfuric. Those are your seven strong acids. So any acid, anything that has an H in front that isn't these guys is going to be a weak acid. Then you have your strong bases. I wanted to make them, the columns equal to each other, so I didn't include lithium hydroxide on the strong base side. Lithium hydroxide is a strong base, so we can add it to here if you want me to. Um, because it really is a strong base, but I just wanted to make the columns equal to each other. So <clears throat> you have the, the alkali metal um, hydroxides and then the heavy alkaline earth metal hydroxides. And that, go, that makes a B when you look at it on your periodic table. And so B stands for base, and that's how you remember. So weak acids, we talked about anything that's not a strong acid is a weak acid. So how does that work? Well, a weak acid will partially ionize when it goes into water. And so some of the hydrogen in acetic acid will dissociate and attach to the water molecule and get your hydronium ion and then your conjugate base of acetic acid, which is acetate, right? And so this happens sometimes. Right? But to figure out how often it happens, we use an equilibrium constant. So the Ka for this is going to be equal to your products, H3O plus and acetate, right? divided by your reactants, the concentration of your weak acid. Okay? And then you can do some problems with this. So what would be the pH of a 1.75 times 10 to the minus third molar nitrous acid solution? So you have nitrous acid. HNO2, we often do it in a, in a lazy way. We don't include the water molecule in here, and we just let it be a proton by itself. Now, remember, we talked about protons by themselves, and that's not a real thing, but you know that. And so now that you know that, we can use it as an abbreviation. And so then it, here's your 1.75 times 10 to the minus third molar nitrous acid solution. So that becomes our initial concentration, zero, zero, because you didn't, you don't start with any when you put this into water, right? The change is going to be minus x. And so because it's a stoichiometrically one-to-one-to-one -one -to -one ratio, then you have the change in here is minus x and the change in here is plus x. And so then here is your um, expression for that. The Ka is equal to x squared divided by 1.75 minus times 10 to the minus third minus x equals your K value which is 4.5 times 10 to the minus 4. And you would just look that up. That would be in a textbook somewhere or given to you in the problem. And then you solve the quadratic because x equals negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac over 2a, and you get 3.16 as your pH. 
Um, this is going to continue in 